Hey y'all, Coach in a Fight here. Giving all praise and honor to our Father in Heaven, hallowed be His name, who has just brought something to my attention here lately. It was pressed on my heart not too long ago, a few days ago, that something was big was coming. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, it just feels like something really big. And then when I use lots to ask questions, it all seems to point to um, events in the fourth month. So I came over to do a little search for uh, the fast of the fourth month because I um, usually talk about this. Um, at least I did last year about the fast of the fourth month. And you guys could check out that video. It has a lot of details in it that I won't go into in this particular video. But one thing about it, as I was looking, doing my search that I normally do, where I put in the fourth month and just look at the events of the fourth month, um, all of those are talking about the ninth day of the fourth month, which you can read about over there in Second Kings chapter 25. Um, it's uh, when the famine uh, came up on the land after Nebuchadnezzar went in there in the 10th month. Here on the fourth month and the ninth day of that month is when the famine starts. And so I thought that's what I was looking for. You see it written there in Jeremiah all over the place. But then this one down here jumped out at me. And that's uh, Ezekiel 1 and 1. And like I said, I'm giving Father credit for this because I had almost completely missed it until, you know, less than 24 hours ago. So I'm rushing to get this class out and rushing to do a lot of other things. If you've been paying attention to our channel, you kind of seen some of the stuff we're rushing to do. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But what I mainly want to focus on in this video is um, what we see over here in Ezekiel chapter 1 and 1. You see here that Ezekiel, it appears during the same time of the fast of the fourth month um, that he, Ezekiel, actually got a word from the Lord on the fifth day of the fourth month. Now, I thought this was really interesting, first of all, because this is the day that CERN is doing some stuff over there. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because I believe all of that stuff is connected. And so in this video, I'm, I'm, I want to focus on it, what it is that CERN can actually be doing accidentally or on purpose. I don't know. But when we look in the keys of Enoch, which we're going to do in this video, when we look in the Third Testament, when we look in the book of Revelation, and some other uh, books all related to uh, what we're seeing here. Um, I think we're all going to want to take another look at CERN and, you know, ask, you know, what, what exactly are they doing over there? But anyway, so we're here in the first chapter of the book of Ezekiel. Like you said, right there in verse three, that a word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel, the priest. And then when you scroll down to verse four, you see it's starting to talking about this will within a will. Right. Let me just read it. It says, and I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north and a great cloud of fire unfolding itself and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber out of the midst of the fire. Now, up until now, I personally and maybe some of you guys have too thought that he was seeing something spiritually here. But we're going to find out he might have actually been seeing something um, with his naked eyeballs and something we could actually see too here um, Y'all be prepared to leave a comment as we go um, Go ahead and hit that like button because you'll probably forget to do so by the time you get to the end of this video Like I said, you'll probably want to run over there and see what CERN is talking about But anyway, look right here at verse 5 It says, out of the midst thereof came a likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance, that they had the likeness of a man, and everyone had four faces, everyone had four wings. And it goes on to describe these, these four individuals, which, you know, we hear about these four individuals even over in the book of Revelation. Um, these four beasts, as they're described, they have four sides and four faces. You see down there in verse 10, where it says, as for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion and on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. And they four also had the face of an eagle. Now, we're going to see this here in a second. 
and you guys go ahead and read this whole chapter because I want to skip ahead a little bit down here where it starts talking about these wheels down here in about verse 16. It says the appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of burl and they four had one likeness and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. So this is what we hear about the wheels within the wheel. So now let's let's keep all of this in mind now. So we have these four creatures and we also have these wheels within the wheel here in Ezekiel chapter one where he's getting this word from the Lord on the fifth day of the first month. And like I said, this all corresponds to that date that CERN is actually planning on uh, running their tests at full power, um, basically breaking records and, and all of that kind of stuff. But anyway, let me jump over and show you something else. Now, this is coming from the book of Third Enoch. Um, if you've been following our channel, you'd notice we've been doing a lot of classes on this book. I recently read this book. And um, it has a wealth of information in here, uh, guys. Um, as a matter of fact, well, I'm going to show you right now who these four beasts are. All right, so we're going to come down to um, chapter 205. Um, you notice that we have been putting up uh, these chapters, doing read-alongs uh, chapter by chapter. But I jumped ahead all the way to 205 because I, I wanted you guys to hear this whole chapter. So after this video, go over and check out that uh, read-along um, as it goes over this entire chapter i really just want to point out down here in about verse 66 where it's talking about ezekiel here and his prophecy what he saw and notice there that it starts talking about these four faces here in verse 67 he says the face of the bull as it is seen in the scripture of yahizekel represents taurus and guys i don't like pronouncing these names here so i'm gonna use the um Hebrew name for it, which is Kissel. You guys saw a video I did uh, not too long ago where I had created a mnemonic device. I'm um, basically singing a song called Kimmel and Kizzle. It actually points to these star constellations, which normally have the name of gods, and I don't like pronouncing the name of these gods. So I'm going to pronounce the Hebrew word, which is Kizzle, uh, for uh, this one here. But so this is what one of the faces represented. It says Kizzel which in ancient astronomy gives the origin of the Merkaba vehicle as coming from Kizil. So this is what these faces, matter of fact, let me read a little bit. You'll make a little more sense. It says the lion face shows the probe of our sun system by the Merkaba vehicle. In the higher evolutionary astronomy, a lion solar face represents population one system on the edge of a greater central sun. So you see, these faces are actually representing something to us. Um, the third one, it says the eagle face in terms of the ancient scroll tells us that the probe is exploring our galaxy and represents its outstretched wings. The enormous spiral arms of the S sub Bravo or the S sub Charlie series galaxy. And then the last one, it says another face will have the appearance of a man but does not constitute the substance of an earthling. The face in the likeness of a man shows the overlap carried from the higher evolutionary creation to the human evolutionary creation. So all four faces come together given the similitude needed to coordinate the species to go from the image of its dragon-like entropy to the image of positive centropy, the dove as creation fully manifested and redeemed so what ezekiel was seeing over there is the return of the dove and this chapter goes more into that like i said you can hear the whole chapter um i'll give you a link at the end of this video but what's going on here is the return of the dove guys and some of you know more about this than i do um but we're talking about the merkaba here now to get a little bit of taste of it we come to uh 205 verse 65 the Merkaba is the will within the will. This is actually talking about the return over the Ophanim. Now, Enoch was an Ophanim that gave this information to this uh, J.J. Hartok that wrote this book. 
and we can hear about these open them here but one thing i want to point out about these guys because they're going to try to portray these beings coming as dangerous aliens or something like that no they're actually our spiritual brothers um they're going to be interacting with us helping us to deal with some of the things that is coming up on the world matter of fact let me jump down and look at verse 74 it says the Ophanim also make the Merkaba available to other orders of higher intelligence so as to carry out specific functions. And here are their functions. It says one to guide man to knowledge of the infinite way. And this is, you know, what we hear about, you know, all things will be revealed. Well, a lot of things are being revealed in this book here. Uh, called the keys of Enoch or the uh, book of knowledge the keys of Enoch or something like that but also it says they come to minister to disembodied entities on the physical and spiritual planets so they're coming to interact not only with us but those in the spirit world it says they come to protect man from belief systems which are inconsistent with the love and light of the cosmic law so you know this is um we hear uh, later on that these people will get blanked out as when because they don't really uh, follow the Holy Spirit. They, you know, really reject the Holy Spirit. But we'll get to that in a second. Um, it says to guard mankind from the extraterrestrial intelligences that would radically change the balance and flow design between the kingdoms of creation. So whereas you have this Kimmel and Kizzle, which are the good star constellations, you have um, Ursa Minor and Ursa Major, which are we learn in this book that are where the uh, bad entities come from. So this Merkaba experience, while you have you know all of this evil that's trying to take over the world, what this is saying is that you know we have uh, protections coming from these Ophanim and it's Merkaba from these individuals. Uh, talking about the children of the father, um, our father's children have protections from this, whereas those guys kind of be on their own. But anyway. It says to regenerate and resurrect the faithful remnant of the seed creation when the powers of Michael and Christ coverage to begin one design of creation into the new heavens of a heavenly father. So um, this is talking about the rise of, of Michael, like we read over there in the book of Daniel. And we're going to jump over there a little bit uh, when we talk about the timing of this. But um, it talks about a time of trouble. Well, during this time of trouble, um, matter of fact, let's go over there and look at Daniel. Well, over here in the last chapter, at least the last chapter in the Bible, you know, there's two more chapters in the Apocrypha. But anyway, you see right there in verse 12, where it's talking about how Michael will stand up. The great prince will stand up for the children of thy people. Um, but then it says that there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. This is talking about the pole shift that we're going through. Uh, you, you're hearing a lot from our channel, especially about this pole shift, because this basically boils down to the apocalypse. Um, that's what's going to cause the apocalypse is a shift in our electromagnetic field. But then notice right there in verse two, how he says, many that sleep in the dust shall awake and some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. And this is one of the things we read over there as far as the um, the Ophanim and, and the Merkaba. Even this one right here is a different one in verse three. It says, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So this right here is what it was saying Back when it's talking about regenerating and, and resurrecting you know, the faithful remnant, um, you remember it's, it's up to these people to kind of um, have humanity to carry on. If it wasn't for our father having this seed, some individuals that will survive, all humans will be um, exterminated in this extinction level event that we know now as the uh, change in the electromagnetic field. Now, let me jump you over to um, the third testament of the Bible that talks about this. And we're, we're going to get back into um, some of the scriptures that you may be more familiar with. But let me read some of this here. This is the third testament of the Bible. Um, chapter 54, which is about the struggles between doctrines and religions and churches. 41 says, The spiritual valley shall come yet closer to man to give them testimony of its existence and its presence. On all roads there shall be signs, evidence, revelations, and messages that insistently proclaim that a new era has begun. And that's basically what we're talking about here. The change that we all, basically what we hear about over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You sit down there in verse 52, it says, In a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, 
for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and shall be changed. So this is this is what we're talking about. And then let's come down to um, First Thessalonians um, for the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And in my last video, you heard me explain how the seals and the chakras are the same thing. Um, turns out those words are the same. It's just that in the Eastern world, they use the word chakra. And in the Western world, here we use the word seal. So don't be put off by this. But anyway, what I wanted to do was come over to this chapter right quick to show you how this is all related to the seventh trumpet. Um, turns out a trumpet, a chakra and a seal are all the same thing uh so we're coming over here to uh key number 319 and i'm just going to read a little bit starting right there verse 42 it says i was told by metatron that each man would recognize the existence of the new program of light according to his own unique time element which is connected with the chakra levels filtering the energies of space-time events so what this is talking about guys is our individual awakenings some of us um, um were awakened to the truth back in 2015 some of us was awakened to the truth back in um earlier according to what level that individual was on according to what seal level that individual was on um meaning you know how ready there they were at the time but anyway let me look at verse 43 it says for those who are operating already on a seventh chakra level of enlightenment the recognition that we are entering a new program of consciousness will take place in 1976 for those operating on the sixth chakra level, it will take place in the 1980s. For those on the fifth and fourth chakra level, this realization will come up before the year 2004, according to the reckoning of the lower heavens, which will mark the beginning of the next great cycle. So <laughs> this is funny because you can look back at your awakening when when it was that you came to the knowledge of the truth or when it was that our father um, enlightened you and um, maybe brought the scripture into your life. Um, and I can tell you where you was at the time. And since then, he's been elevating you up to uh, these higher levels and he's elevating us all up to this seventh chakra, which corresponds to the seventh seal, the enlightened stage of our spiritual evolution. So we can think here when you start calculating, you can easily see the um, seven years of each one of these different levels here. So these are the trumpets blowing. And so what we're understanding from this simple mathematics means that the trump, the seventh trumpet is about to sound. And then when I jump over here to uh, verse 50, it says beginning in 1976, the grids will begin to be shifted into a new geophysical program. So this was kind of the start. And this book, The Keys of Enoch, was given in 1973. So that very well could be the absolute beginning of all of this. It's funny how that's actually on my baby sister's birthday. But what's even more interesting is that if you add a Jubilee cycle to 1973, you end up in the year 2022. So this is actually what could be going on. And the strange thing is how CERN may have a, a hand in this. This is all on the fifth day of the fourth month that Ezekiel got this word about this Merkaba and these four beasts who he's seen coming up on the earth, coming to basically resurrect and save our father's people, all while CERN is actually um, running their experiments. And if, and if you don't see the connection, let, let me show you something. We're going to go back to uh, chapter 205 of the book of the Keys of Enoch. Like I said, I'm rushing this out. You know, you can hear them all getting ready for the 4th of July. Um, the 5th of July may be a little bit more exciting. You know, it's a little bit scary, but we got to remember that, you know, Zechariah was told that these will be times of joy. These fasting days, which is on the 9th, that'll be Saturday, but we'll do more, another class before then on the fasting. I just wanted to hurry up and get this one out on the fifth day but anyway we're looking back up here at um this is uh chapter or key 205 um, excuse me if i'm uh, saying chapters but it's key 205 in the keys of enoch and uh verse 44 says however before the vehicles can enter the merkaba must first come into our light life zone through rotational circumversion 
a process of separating the magnetic structure of our electromagnetic field and create an artificial time warp. So, you know, that's that's actually what they're doing at CERN is they're creating artificial time warps. That's what they're talking about, the black holes. So they're planning on running their most powerful experiment on the same day that Ezekiel is hearing about, you know, these these artificial time warps and these Merkabas coming through. Um, yeah, this is this is really interesting. Yeah. And then it, it goes on into it. You can you can read on, like I said, uh, 205. That's why I posted this one up. Um, a lot earlier than the rest um, because it's talking about you know seems like what's going on with CERN there now as far as the timing is concerned um, you guys remember that you know we used to talk about this page a lot back there before January the 13th as we were talking about the end of Jacob's trouble um, but it's still valid um, because this that it that was the fast of the 10th month which occurred before the fast of the fourth month, like you saw back in uh, Second Kings, um, the tenth month events was in verse one, while the fourth month events was in verse three. But we'll cover that more when we talk about the fast. What I really want to point out to you using this diagram or using this chart or whatever it is, is the significance of the year 2022 and how anything um, um, should be analyzed and looked at because this could be the year that everything goes down. And for the fifth day of the fourth month, events talking about the Merkaba and talk about these four beasts and CERN, like I said, it, 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 it kind of stands out to me. Y'all can let me know down in the comment section if you disagree. Um, we could chat about it down there, but this, it seems to be related, but only time will tell. I'm really just want to give you guys a heads up because there's many people out here that's actually trying to fool us. They want us to believe that these are uh, dangerous aliens or something that's, you know, coming down here to mess with us. It may be coming down to mess with them, but our, our people are protected. And if we're if we don't know that this is going on, we could get confused, get caught up in it. Um, so I'm just giving you a heads up. If you see anything strange or anything weird or anything Point to the Bible and the scripture first, you know, don't don't be over there on CNN and Fox trying to figure out what's going on because they are they they are dead set on leading us astray. But anyway, so what we're talking about is the seventh seal opening. So let's let's go to Revelation as far as Jacob's trouble um, being over, guys. And, you know, there 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 being an increase of knowledge guys it's overwhelming i'm sure you guys are experiencing it too some of you are experiencing it too not everybody goes through this like we see in the last chapter of the book of uh third enoch down in about verse 67 where it says that these people who reject the holy spirit their their minds will be blanked and it appears to say matter of fact let me just read it it says furthermore those who are not using the gifts of the Holy Spirit will have their minds blanked after a Merkaba experience. This is done lest the physical mind is overloaded by the consciousness transference of data from the higher intelligence. So while these people have been uh, programmed to think that these aliens are coming, all of a sudden you could imagine them start having these uh, uh, consciousness experiences and it may drive them crazy. So in order to prevent this from happening, because the voices will be coming from the inside, their minds will be blank somehow. And I'm not sure how all of that's going to work. Um, but you find that over in the last chapter of the book. But let's let's go on to the book of Revelation. OK, I came to uh, chapter seven first where um it's talking about the seals and the uh 30 not goes into the seals and all of that and we'll see that in a second but what i want to come over and is look at chapter eight where it says and when he had opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour and then you see um you got the other angel a different angel there in verse three who has the incense and you see down there, um, it says this angel took this incense or, or took this censer, filled it with fire um, of the altar and cast it up on the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and uh, lightnings and a great earthquake. So we know all of these things are common. But um, let me show you what the Keys of Enoch has to say about it. We'll come all the way down to um, Key 307, where it starts 
uh, giving details about the keys, about the seals. We we also hear about the seals in uh, uh, the Third Testament. So we really need to, in a future class, put all three together: the Book of Revelation, Third Testament, and Third Enoch on these seals. And um, maybe we could paint a better picture. But I want to jump down here to verse seventy-two. And it says, and I saw how the father fulfilled both the six and the seventh seal by having them come together as one glorious and amazing mystery of establishing his crown of light upon the architecture of creation. Now, the third testament came at the beginning of the sixth seal um, that, that started back in 1883 with the, um, the, the kickoff event was the Krakatoa uh, earthquake or the Krakatoa volcano Um that's right. That happened the year before the uh, Third Testament, which is the second coming of the Messiah back there in 1883. But at the end of this uh, sixth seal, what he's saying here is that he's combining the sixth seal and the seventh seal together. Uh, so it would be the end of the sixth seal and the beginning of the seventh seal. Um, right here, let's see what verse 73 says. And I saw when he had opened the sixth seal and a great earthquake occurred and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the entire moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as when a fig tree shaken by high wind casts its unripe figs and the heaven departed as a scroll that is being rolled up so verse 73 is basically talking about exactly what we saw over there in the book of revelation verse 74 is too those are direct quotes from the book of revelation but then look at verse 75. It says, And I saw the solar system leave its magnetic dip, and it displaced from its alignment with what man calls the North Star. This occurred as it entered an electromagnetic vacuum. And we've, we've, if you've been around, you've heard about this electromagnetic vacuum that we're in right now. Um, we need to get protection from the sun. But what this is saying is how this is related to the seventh seal. This is the seventh seal opening. The seventh seal opens with the change in the magnetic electromagnetic field. Verse 76 says, And I saw how the solar system was given a new circumpolarity with a new north star. Thus the Father's will will prevail and the solar system was taken beyond the spontaneous collisions of particles and placed on a true latitude attuned to his cosmic will. So that will correspond to um, the new heavens and the new earth. As a matter of fact, that's what it means by new heavens and a new earth. Is it, Some of these revelations are, are coming so fast, praise our Father in heaven for them. The, the new heavens is the fact that we're going to have a new north star. And of course, the new earth is going to be um, when the, the um, tectonic plate shifts around and all of this. Um, guys, I understand this is an overwhelming overload of information uh, that we're getting here. And to that, I say, welcome, welcome to my world. It's been going on like this for me since January. And if you've experienced anything like this, you know, let us know down in the comments section. A lot of us, you know, we can only uh, go by others' testimony. And so there's some people who don't experience any of this and they, and they kind of be doubtful of anything is going on. So share anything you know about this down in the comment section. And let's get ready uh, for this fifth event. Um, and then we'll talk about a little later this week, the fast uh, event. That's when we'll do a lot of praying and charitable deeds for one another. And before I go, let me mention the charitable deed that you guys could do for our channel. And that's these bees. Um, we want to um, try to get a lot of beehives. We've been trying to become self-sustainable over here at the Hillbilly Homestead. And um, we've had a lot of failures when it comes to sweeteners and stuff like that. We've tried stevia. We've tried um, sugar cane and other stuff, but um, a lot of those things require a lot of processing, a lot of machinery to uh, process it. Whereas honey, you know, the bees are doing all of the work. And so we give you guys the opportunity to help us out. Um, it is a charitable deed um, that you're doing if you were to purchase one of those items off the gift list down in the description of this video. But um, we ask you to do it quickly because um, well, I don't I don't think we have a lot of time. So. I wanted to give special mention to those who have purchased since yesterday. Like we said, we are rushing to get everything here by the 9th. And some of you guys have gone in and uh, started helping us out already. Particularly, uh, Miss Darby from the UK has uh, purchased a couple of items, very important items here. 
and that's uh to help us to get protected from getting stung by these bees we're very unfamiliar that's the only thing i know about bees so far is that they sting you when you mess with them um so she's provided us with some protective gear so again we want to thank miss darby from uh london no doubt and we also want to thank uh, miss williams from miami florida um who has purchased another very important part of this system we're learning and that's these um, what they call honey super kits. That's actually where the honey is for rookies just starting out. They kind of learn that part the hard way. So um, we need a lot of those. That's the main part of the, uh, the, the beehive. The rest of it is kind of to support this part here. So we need as many of these as we can get. And then we wanted to uh, mention uh, D. Scott from Plant City, Florida who has purchased a couple of important items here. Um, the smoker pellets, again, those help to keep us from getting stung. I had to look to see exactly what those are. Um, Chris is um, gonna be our expert on these bees here, whether he knows it or not. And he'll probably be the first one to read this beekeeping book, um, but I'll be checking it out too. Those are very important items and we really appreciate you guys. And the other support that we get too, um, guys, we don't wanna leave anybody out. A lot of you guys are supporting, have supported us through Cash App, through PayPal, um, the other wish lists, and even sending us gifts and stuff to our uh, P.O. box. You guys have really supported us over the years, and we want to take the time to say thank you. And for those of you who are wondering why honey at this time, um, if you understand this biblical significance of honey, it'll all make sense. Um, and maybe we'll put out another video on that. Um, turns out the ministers are supposed to do our work without honey. And I can say, yes, that has been the case. And so, you know, as some of these significant changes come about, you know, maybe it's time for us to get a little bit of honey. Um, I think we kind of deserve it, but I'm gonna go on. So this could be it, guys. I'm not sure. Um, I'm pretty sure, but, you know, we won't know until it actually happens. Um, and I've been wrong before. We actually thought we would have the Great Awakening back there in uh, January. But I believe all I was doing was combining things. Um, the Great Awakening uh, was obviously separated from the uh, Jacob's Trouble being over and the knowledge increasing. That definitely happened. The Jacob's Trouble is over. Knowledge is increasing, so that prophecy was definitely fulfilled. But as far as this Merkaba event, we are yet to see it. So um, this actually could be it. If not, we'll continue to watch. And guys, if, you, if you're if getting a little bit worried in all of this, um, get baptized again. You don't have to keep doing it. If you've done it in, a, you know, in the last few years and you've been keeping the feast days, you're good. But if, you know, you're new to this channel or new to the truth and, you know, you, you've missed last Passover and the other feast days, you want to get a uh, baptism. Definitely one of the first things you want to do, even if you have to do it yourself or you can definitely get your spouse or your children or your parents to do it for you. Um, that's probably the most important thing you can do if, like I said, you haven't done it in a while. You don't have to keep doing it, you know, doesn't hurt. I may be on my 10th one by now, but that's what cleans us up and gets us prepared to be on the right side of these things. And you can see uh, videos that we have um, um, posted. One video particularly is called The Way. Uh, check out that one and even that series on or that playlist on those videos that's popping up. And I want to say a special thank you to you guys who watched this video to the end. Um, that's very important to the YouTube algorithm. Um, you... I mean, normally, um, if you don't watch a video to the end, it sends a message saying that the video is not worth watching. And so um, it makes it kind of hard um, to get the word out sometimes when YouTube pushes us, the truth speakers, down to the bottom of the list. But even in today's time, you might want to make sure you have your bell notification button pushed. But even more than that, you probably want to go in and uh, check your Truth Seeker channels. Um, look down in their um, latest videos to make sure you're not missing anything. Um, I'm getting reports that people are missing videos. They're not getting notifications, even though 
they have the bell notification button pushed and this is occurring with me too as I was uh, doing further research um, some of the guys who I watch who are giving reports on earthquakes and solar flares and other things that are going on I'm not getting notifications at all I'm having to go you know and look at their uh, channel and make sure that I'm not missing anything so this event is being uh, suppressed universally every all information related to what's going on is actually being suppressed and you're gonna have to dig it out so um, and with that let me say may our Heavenly Father hallowed be his name bless you and keep you may he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace